All right, we're back. Now we're going to get started with another Deus Ex mod. This one's a single player story mod called Burden of 80 Proof. One I remember pretty fond fondly from back in the day. I spill my drink! I spill my drink! I'm gonna keep this in the 4 3 aspect ratio just because I'm not sure this mod uses any kind of cutscenes or anything that are built specifically for 4 3. So just to be safe, make it most authentic. Yeah, why, why is it called Burden of 80 Proof? I actually, back in the day, I was I was basically a child. I didn't know what 80 Proof meant. At least until I played this. Let us begin. Hey, Rich. Slept an hour last night. You're still in for this weekend, correct? Sunshine? Beer soaked beach house with pre Memorial Day access? Oversexed post grad girls with bikini fetishes? No boyfriends? And even mm -hmm. less morals? I think I can put in an appearance. Good. Need food. I'll have the gallon sized gin and tonic. Actually, we need you to get. Can't. Too busy. Never mailed any leaves for the house. What? Or the down payment. You are very dumb. Don't start. I just got two earfuls of shriek from Grandma Rental Agent about this. Where are you? I'm about to get on the parkway. I'm headed there now to take care of all this. Can you handle the alcohol? Let's just get everything once we're down there. Is it a Mardi Gras Pete or college? George Blood and the real world. I think about that. Ask somebody else. Everyone else has been drinking since 11 a.m. That's forecast the software you wrote says they'll run out of food by the time we get there. If Ferris finds out I left in the middle of the day, the faster you go, the better off we'll be. Also, I'm okay. completely broke. I don't get paid till next week. Broke? I thought you guys got paid a fortune at that place. Yeah. Well, between various book expenses, required game purchases, and last week at blackjack tables, my checking account has seen some healthier days. Nice work with that girlfriend, by the way. You're even starting to sound more fun. Thanks. We are desperate, Peter. Can't you borrow the cash from somebody in your office? Or ask your boss for an advance this week? Or go visit that worthless neighbor of yours, Gil. He owes you money, right? Uh. What do we need? Beer. Six cases ought to do it. See if you can pick up some food while you're out, too. My car's busted, too. I walked to work this morning. Already taken care of. I sent Cal to your office. He should be there any time now. I'll get you where you need to go. Fine. This better be one hell of a party, my friend. I guess that all depends on you now, Peter. I'm already excited. Wow, what a an auspicious start to the mod. Okay, I think my avatar froze. Let me restart that program. Thanks for stopping in and hanging out, Bible. Hope you have a good rest of your night. Okay, we're back. Okay. 
But that's why I had the handicap sign. Because we're using the handicap bathroom. To like slow zoom out from way too close, I mean. Oh, look at those real time reflections. Thor Weisskopf. Weisskopf. Place where we know what we're doing, right? Yep, sure is. Say, Thor, I need a favor. Myself, I try to stay as regular as possible, you know? Asynchronous outputs are for circuits, not people, I always say. Sounds good, Thor. Listen, I need to ask you something. I like to keep my movements pretty consistent. You know, BM in the PM, as they Little say. Little highbrow humor but here. Today, I don't know. Something's not quite right. I hate you, Thor. We need to turn the voice levels up a bit more. I drink. Yes, seven is too much. <laughs> What's in the news today? Classifieds. Tired of pushy salesmen at other game shops? You should definitely get a strategy guide with that. Why don't you subscribe to our mailing list? Everybody else does. Don't listen to the overwhelmingly terrible reviews. This game rocks. You deserve a better experience. Let Hank tell you what's what. Honest Hank's video games. At the Underball, lower level. Never use these things because I heard that they're full of bacteria, so you wash your hands and then you, you go stick it under this bacteria filled hot air blower and it just makes your hands filthy again. We, we gotta save uh, electricity costs, so that's alright, bud. I think we will stay out of the women's bathroom. Got a Vault Techlin logo. Independent robot designs. Servos with a Smile, a biography of Maverick Robotics Tycoon Mark Ferris by Sheldon Cooley, page 29. After leaving the Marines, the young Ferris anticipated the start of an auspicious career when he was recruited by a large and now defunct East Coast think tank for robotics and mechanical design. What he found was a snail-paced, relentlessly bureaucratic corporate morass? Yeah, that's, that's what that word says, morass. Which seemed to emphasize, emphasize the pursuit of grant money and litigation over innovative engineering solutions. I saw guys in their 40s and 50s with bright active minds who'd been put out to pasture because they chose to spend their time solving problems rather than selling themselves to layers of management. It was sadder than any waste of life I'd ever seen on any battlefield. Ten months later, Ferris quit his job, moved his belongings and an old sofa into a small warehouse about 50 miles away. The independent robot designs was born. The sofa is still at his office today, and during crunch time he says he still sleeps on it. Oh, it's a retired robot. Urban Strike Walker, oh no. We're, we're building busters. Hey gods, welcome in. How's it going? Look, you're feeling well today. Get you a good shout out before we get too into this. So now, the okay. Who's <laughs> Peter Griffin? Goodbye, Peter Griffin. He de he definitely fell through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
thought that was loud enough. I feel like that was too quiet. Just a little bit for next time. I think I forked it. Uh oh, oh my gosh. Oh, okay, we're good. Let's do a quick, quick save there. IRD commercial grade positions assistant. We're tired. What is our mission right now? Obtain six cases of beer for the party tonight. Gil owes you some money, pay him a visit at his apartment, and our secondary goal is to obtain food for the party as well. Noted, we'll do. Oh, we don't know. Thor's password. No sticky note. Whoops. Kinda overshot that a little. Yeah. Who's this? You got ten seconds, Kent. What is it? Oh, it's because I have a dialogue option. Let's see. Have a nice lark, guns. Hmm. I'd make a poll, but I don't think we have access to polls yet. What do you think, chat? Should we try to butter them up? Should we be honest? Say that there's a we need money for a party, or should we demand the money that we're owed? Good corporate monkeys and sweet talk the boss. All right, let's try it. I think this is voice acted. Well, Mr. Ferris, let me begin by saying that I've always considered you to be a fair and generous individual. Kent. Yes? Do I look like I'm in the mood for this? Not really. I want you to turn around, go back to your office, and get back to work. Understood? Yes, sir. You know, you're lucky. It's Friday, and after I get some scotch in me, there's a good chance I'll forget this happened. <laughs> well, that didn't go well. I think we still need a crank. I spill my drink! Speech volume up a bit more. You know one reason why robots are better than people? They never ask me for money. Well... Typical. Especially considering it's kind of like, what, 2004? This. Mark Ferris, is that the. Oh, that's that. That's who we just talked to. Okay. Doreen Hornsby, Peter Kenneth, that's us. Joseph Donovan, and Bernie White. Where is. Where's Gil? Who is Gil? Why is Gil? Yeah, this is... this is, uh... Oh, I didn't update the stream title. Let me do that real quick.
This is the Burden of 80 Proof mod for Deus Ex. It is fully voice acted, at least I think it's fully voice acted, I don't remember. Every voice line, pretty sure. One that I played way back in the day, one that I remember fondly. Let's just keep looking around. Hey, door. Darling, what are you going to ask me for? What do you mean? You're wearing your I need something face. All men have one. I need cash for this weekend. Big party or something? Come on, you were my age once. Yeah, four years ago, smartass. Pretty please? Sorry, Peter. As much as I'd enjoy discussing what you'd have to do for me in exchange for a line of credit, I'm afraid I'm waiting for payday as anxiously as you. Student loan police coming on a little strong these days? Phase? Hired thugs. Want to come to a party tonight? No thanks. I'm socializing with adults this weekend. Got em. <laughs> have fun. I hope you get your money somehow. Thanks. I believe this is this is definitely our office given all the pizza boxes and empty soda cans. Wow, we we read a book? This... Oh gosh, controls are messed up. Scuffed stream. Yep. Just have to give it like twenty seconds, I guess. Now, can we just not jump in this mod? That could be it. Why do you need to jump? You're just a regular guy. You don't need to jump on anything. It's a book on Pearl. Compiling your code. Pearl. Okay, I don't. This is just like actual information about coding, I think. Hmm, don't know our own login and password yet. But this guy's got it stashed somewhere though. Yep, sticky notes. Um, hello? Why do you have everyone's username and password? Password, I love my 401k. So neat. Create bot. Bill 30. You're for sale. New life? And iron boot. What a shame. Oops. Oh no no. Okay. He can't. So. Your order, Space Marine Omega Team. Hello, Peter. A new shipment has finally arrived. Apologies for the delay. You can expect your order to arrive late today or, at the latest, tomorrow. Thanks for your patience and we hope you enjoy your item. Yours. Soul. And the email titled, I miss you from someone named Brooke. I am totally miserable. I love you so much and I can't believe we are apart. Why would you do this to me? I feel like I'm just swooning away over here. 
and I worry that you don't feel the same way. And I get so angry with you when I think about it. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? I miss you so much, jerk. Brook. Letter from Joe Donovan called My Vacation. Hey folks, as you know, I'll be out of the office all week. I'm going camping with the family and will not be taking work calls. The only metal I want to handle is my fishing reel, and the only armor discussions I'll be having will be with my son about turtles and snails. That's cute. Turtles and snails, at least. Um, for seven days, Joe Donovan's mind will be free of all work-related thoughts. See you all next week, Joe! And then Mark Ferris sent us stairwell. True, building maintenance sends along word that Due to a small gas leak, the stairs will be closed until further notice. Questions have gotten so far. 1. Isn't this a violation of some sort of building code? Technically, no. Offices are provided with emergency rope ladders in case the need arises for an emergency escape out a window. 2. When will they be open again? Don't know. 3. Isn't this dangerous? I guess you'll just have to get tough and deal with it. MF. Back in the dialogue box. A technologist guide to dealing with sales and marketing. Page 15. If you take away nothing else from this entire book, let it be this fact. Marketing equals lying. As such, the marketer's world is driven by the currency of the disingenuous. Many experienced sales executives develop a worldview whereby they have no respect for any statement containing authenticity of fact or emotion. Thus, Often, an effective means for dealing with these co-workers can be to match his level of insincerity with your own. Of course, nothing that either of you say to each other will ever be true. But after enough deception, the salesman will realize that you're simply not a source of good data, and he'll move on to hassling someone else. Does this guy have a private bathroom? Oh no, it goes right into the conference room. What in the world? What are you? An IRD Mark 12 body armor prototype. Okay. Hey, sales and marketing. Well, well, Peter Kent. Shouldn't you be working on Joe's new collision detection software? Well, I finished it already. Wow, I'm genuinely impressed. Oh, uh, so this is the marketing person. So it's a good thing we just read that book. So we know not to be honest. Probably buttering him up isn't the best idea either. So I think we say your many things, Bernie, but genuine is not one of them. You are many things, Bernie, but genuine is not one of them. That's hilarious. You are here because... I need to borrow some cash for this weekend. You mock me, then ask for favors? Who's mocking? Just an honest sentiment from one co-worker to another. Let's not poison this further with honest sentiments. Well? Hmm, tell you what. A new sales magazine was supposed to arrive for me this week, but I'm not sure where it is. I think it's in the office somewhere. Here's what it looks like. Bring me that periodical and you may find yourself a bit wealthier. Lockpick. Dunk. I need to find his magazine. Where did he say that it is? In the office somewhere. Okay.
Bunch of booze behind this very uh, securely locked uh, bulkhead. Should we steal from the boss? Who am I kidding? Of course we should steal from the boss. Scullion, not for sale. Oh, this is Frank Kaplan. Hey, Pete. How's your workload today? Same old. Compiling, testing, trying to keep Bernie's crap off the mail server. That fool will sign up for anything. No doubts here. You need to check on your equipment? No, Frank, you know my gear is solid. Say, you wouldn't happen to have some money you want to lend me, would you? The next check I get goes directly to my ex-wife, along with the next check, and the next check, and the next... I think I get your meaning. Thanks anyway. I'm also looking for a sales magazine that looks like this. It's for Bernie. Well, if you don't mind me saying so, Peter, I couldn't really give a good goddamn about whether or not Bernie has what he needs. Ordinarily, I'd agree, but right now, that thing's standing between me and a weekend for the record books. Have you seen it? Mm, possibly. I brought a bunch of crap down to my old office a while back, just to get it out of the way. Your old office? The one just through the burn-in room? Hey, thanks That's for the, the fall, MJ80. Except if you're smart, you stay out of there for the next few days. Remember that maze formation I had you implement in there yesterday? Yeah. Interesting configuration, by the way. Anyway, I've got a top priority project running right now. The latest spider bot order. A special request from Ferris himself so they can't be disturbed. That's not supposed to start until next week. The old man moved it up ahead of schedule. Testing locomotion, optical subsystems, threat assessment logic, security alarm procedures, the whole deal. You disturb those bots. They even get a glimpse of you. And old Ferris will be serving hors d'oeuvres from your hollowed out skull at his next party. Oh my God. Don't worry. I'm young and spry. <laughs> Change the access code yesterday. New codes 18755. But Pete, please. Don't do anything stupid. Thanks for the info, Frank. I'll check it out. Craft can get terrible down here. Glad I covered up the vents. Vents? Oh. Only got one lockpick, though, so are we gonna move up the vent or that door? Is this what you said the code is for? 0.755 Yup Okay Ew Another book to read. IRT Burnin Operating Manual Technology Design and Documentation by Mark Ferris. Chapter 8 Compiling Options. As discussed in Chapter 1, the room is laid out as desired. Pressing F8 begins the compile process. A room layout must be compiled before it can be automatically implemented by the ground level hardware. This chapter will discuss the various options for compiling the layout depending on the functional requirements of the tests which will be conducted. Uh-oh, we got a, ge a geometry error here. I haven't saved in a while. Do I need to avoid these robots? I do? Okay. Ah! 
Jesus Christ. It's so loud. Oops. Some tech bubbles. Ah, we found the magazine. Sorry that's so loud. Let me like lower I the spill my drink! Sound effect volume a little bit more. Oh, that's the door that we uh, saw in the boss's office. Still a little loud. I spill my drink. I don't know if me getting caught in there is going to be an issue. Oh, I'll put it on this side. But why? Servos with a smile. A biography of Maverick Robotics Tycoon Mark Ferris by Sheldon Cooley. Page 68. The suburban headquarters of independent robot designs is housed in a converted World War II armament production facility. In addition to the standard office building amenities, it boasts a full-featured in-house prototyping workshop, as well as a 6,300 square foot robot test testing chamber. This burning room features an indoor landscape made in made in infinitely reconfigurable by special modular wall units that can be assembled and arranged 100% automatically via custom software. Anything from basic movement trials to robot physical therapy experiments involving damaged or repaired field bot, the marathon multi-day robot stress testing sessions can be accomplished in the burning room. Here's 60 bucks, plus a $10 banter bonus for the no-nonsense way you handled the situation. As a salesman, I can appreciate a good point at comeback. Whatever. <laughs> That's the spirit. No, seventy dollars for a magazine. So we got money. We need beer. Where and who is Gil? Just what the uh -oh. hell is it you think you're doing? Why did my alarms go off? That's I. Those robots don't know what they're talking about. I catch you screwing around one more time today. And you're suspended! Ugh. Should have taken the vent. Yeah, let's go in the elevator. Thanks for the ride. It's been a while. What have you been up to these days? Oh, you know me. I've always got a few independent projects in the works. Anything to stay out of the databases, huh? Something like that. Although it's not always easy to resist when I see some of the benefits and freedoms you guys get. Yeah, it's a real carousel of riches. Speaking of which... Don't even bother asking, man. My piggy bank starved to death long ago. How's, uh, Brooke? You two still together? Not really. We're taking some time off at the moment. 
Sorry to hear that. What happened? She accused me of wanting to sleep with all of her friends. Do you? Yes, but I wasn't going to. Serves me right for letting her move in next door to me. Plants for the weekend? There's a big thing going on at Rich's summer place. I know, he briefed me on the whole affair, including his realtor troubles. Sounds tempting, but lamentably, I have other plans. I owed him a favor, though, so I'm here to help. What do we need? Six cases of beer. Your bro culture mm. here. There's a place down in the Undermall. I've taken plenty of booze off their hands over the years. You could also try the Nearside Tavern downtown. You still regular there? Unfortunately for my liver, yes. I also need to stop by my place. I need to uh, rattle a neighbor until some money falls out. Nice. So, where are we going first? Hmm. Let's go to the tavern. To the Nearside Tavern. Sounds good. What a charming little pub. Too bad they decided to install televisions. Oh. Such a shame. Guess I'll go someplace else. Afternoon, Kent. I'm so glad you decided to stop by to continue to give me crap about the TVs. Televisions ruin a bar, Chris. You know that. Dilutes the atmosphere, like stretching kegs with water. It's strictly lowest common denominator stuff. It hasn't stopped you from showing up. That's different. I'm a problem drinker. You have problems, but drinking isn't one of them. Actually, today it kind of is. What do you mean? I need six cases of beer by tonight, and I'm short on cash. You don't sell beer by the case, do you? Nope. No margins in that for a place like this. Damn. Try the Undermall. I guess. Thanks anyway. See you next week. Yeah, stop by. I'll be here working hard to push the Nearside Tavern closer to the middle of the bell curve, just where Peter Kent likes it. <sighs> so sad. What does that mean? Restrooms are broken. Don't bother. Oh no, that cost us five dollars. But we got a cool action figure. The year team action figure for a five. Oh. Guess we're done here? The tab's getting up there, Kent. One of these days you're actually gonna have to pay it. Where would you like to go, Peter? Let's go to the mall. To the mini mall. Okay. The under mall. No, this is Burden of 80 Proof. One of the other few mods for Deus Ex that includes voice acting. Terryland Donuts valued customer. I am an IRD retail service unit model 400 SE. I know all about it. I was there when you were born. <laughs> How may I assist you? You can empty your cash register into my pants. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do not understand your request. Would you like to try one of our delicious new shuriken crullers? Mm, no thanks. Thank you. And from all of us in the Terryland Donuts family, have a great weekend. Thank you for your patronage. Yeah, that sure is a thin cop. Spring bean of a man. A donut shop? Kind of obvious, isn't it? I'm here because there have been some reports of mischief in this mall recently. Like what? General mischief. 
Exploding frozen yogurt machines, pornography items left in the Christian bookstore, <laughs> kids in weird costumes, that sort of thing. General Mischief sounds like a formidable foe. Would you be able to tell us anything at all that might help us? Yeah, the, the voice acting is pretty good. I'm surprised I... For some reason I remember it not being good, but I was... It was probably just because I was in my edgy teen phase. Hmm. <laughs> probably don't want to piss off the cops. Not when we're, not when we're on such a high stakes mission. Which is to secure food and booze for the weekend, by the way. Now, let, let's butt arm up. Cops, cops love it when you, uh, fuck up to them. Sorry, officer. I haven't heard anything. If I do find out something, I'll be sure to contact the authorities right away. Please do. Thank you very much, citizen. Ugh. Oops. All it takes is a few punks to ruin a good neighborhood. <laughs> In honor of corporations, this shopping mall is made possible by a group of large corporations who, in service to their shareholders, also happen to provide commerce opportunities for local merchants and citizens. May their generosity continue to guide our community through prosperous times. Super smart wait a minute. This looks like the Star Wars Battle Droid, but like extra extra chunky. Hey Hank, how's business? Good enough to keep the buyout offers at bay. You can say that again. Uh... Honest Hank. Humble peddler of wares. Never change. How are this month's imports? Nothing worth your time. <laughs> That's a switch. Things will pick up later this year. Enjoying the latest robot fighter title? Don't I always? If you're interested, the team who built it has a pretty decent online version out now as well. No thanks, I really don't have a crew to play with. And I'm not sharing with strangers. Understood. You wouldn't want to lend me some cash for this weekend, would you? Sorry, friend. I've got to earn a living myself, you know. True enough. Alright, gotta go. I'm on a mission and I haven't met all my objectives yet. <laughs> Good luck. Most of the new crop of role-playing games aren't worth your time. Toy Recall, Washington, D.C. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, in cooperation with the manufacturer named below, today announced voluntary recalls of the, of the following consumer products. Name of product. Gear Team Action Figures. Uh-oh. Manufacturer One Tech Incorporated of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Hazard. The figures, when assembled into Superbot, the Mighty Machina, emit dangerous pulses of electromagnetic energy which can potentially disable electronic or robotic equipment. Huh. I guess we should collect them all. So I'm pretty sure that's going to come in handy at some point. Yo, they got the racism buster? They gotta give me one of those. And bust some racists. These vending machines appear to be broken. Clark. Six cases of beer, please. Twenty dollars a case. 120 total. Oh, geez. Not enough money yet. I'll be back.
Messed up with this mover. There we go. Can't actually grab anything. Men. <laughs> Nintendo serial system. Something tells me these are real serials. Guess we're done here. We got one more place we can go. Can I find this kill person? This is money. Oh, we have to go to the apartment. Where would you like to go, Peter? To the apartments. The apartments it is, then. The Knights of Development Apartment Complex. Which one ours is, so I guess we'll just check each one until we find it. Ah. Uh, the rental office is only open for one hour on Tuesday. Well hidden piece of paper here. Welcome to PageNet Global Banking. Enclosed is your new ATM card. Customer security warning. Never reveal your pin to anyone. No one will you. It's just boilerplate. Common sense, uh. No. Whoa, okay. Real photos of real people? Alright then. There's a book. Brooks Journal, entry 1591. Almost completely moved in. Just need to unpack my clothes. I'll do it later. Peter has been acting very strangely these days. Ever since we broke up, it seems like his mind is going in a million different directions at once. He's got so much responsibility at that job of his, I think the stress may be getting to him. Of course, he won't admit it, because he won't admit to anything, at least not to me. I wish I could be there more for him, and possibly lure him back. <laughs> I wish I could convey to him that I'd do anything for him, as long as he's honest with me. Nothing here. That's it. Oh, there's another point to go to. Six setup. Hey, it's a... It's a screenshot from... The sequel, The Sex Invisible War. That's funny. It's like, uh... It's like when you're playing Pokemon and you go into the, the Game Freak headquarters and they're talking about making the game.
Video game? We got a video game! Servos with a smile, a biography of Maverick Robotics Tycoon Mark Ferris by Sheldon Cooley. Page 121. So with so much demand for his product and such a great culture, why not expand? Clearly Ferris and his firm could be outrageously wealthy by implementing a few standard MBA business school practices, and he knows it. I've got more than enough money, he told me, and my people are paid and treated well. Add too many influences, vendors, shareholders, whatever, and the system becomes too complex, which means that when something goes wrong, it's a lot harder for me to fix. Because complexity and the inconsistency and surprises it brings is the enemy of a reliable system, Ferris goes to great lengths to ensure that he is acquiring the right components at all times. It includes, most importantly, he says, his employees. His eight-day interview and screening process is the stuff of legend, and new hires, while rare, are made aware of their critical importance to the firm. In return, employees get a lifetime of cutting-edge challenges, job security, and firm but fair regard. The result is an exchange of loyalty rarely seen in business, and even more rarely seen in businesses which make a lot of money. Although on occasion, he says, someone who raises his ire enough will receive a one-week suspension, but only after the employee has screwed up repeatedly and on an almost unimaginably grand scale. Hmm. I wonder who that could be referring to. Not again! No! We did it! Let's go! Oops, I need that light on. I run the, the electricity up. Thank you, book up there. Just. Justice and honesty will be the first topics of our speech, especially- oh my god. Especially as we are asking for alliance, because we know that we can never be- There can never be any solid friendship between individuals or union between communities that is worth the name unless the parties be persuaded of each other's honesty, and be generally congenial the one to the other, since from difference in feeling springs also difference in conduct. Thucydides. Who's parking? Is this where Gil lives? Aha! Oh! Had a little, uh... Science experiment going. Very, uh, Spartan lifestyle here, I see, too. Gil, I'm switching to a new tax shelter, so your allowance will be delayed this month. See if you can borrow some money to make it through the next week or two, Dad. This is bongin out of a flask and vase. I'm no expert on drugs, but I don't think that's how you do it. The, <clears throat> excuse me. The Interlaced Interface by Bradley Milton, page 21. Frank looked at the baggie of drugs with a wisp of unsimulated, non-digital, honest-to-goodness nostalgia. So many memories from his younger days now gone amidst his new life of sterile ops parks and lame trade shows. He doubted he'd ever he'd ever smoke it, or anything else, ever again. Not with the newest simulation upgrades being what they were. But the pleasant memories refused to let him just throw the stuff away. With a smile, he stashed it in the hole, next to his contraband computer and illegal logic compilers. 
I'll have to remember to slide something over the hole before the landlord's monthly inspection, he told himself. He imagined most landlords frowned upon crowbarring up the floorboards to hide narcotics. Is that a, a hint that there's uh, drugs hidden in the floor here somewhere? suspicious looking scene. Hmm. I don't know. It is very plain something in daytime in DSX. Thy Burp by Bradley Milton, page 144. Jacob screamed at the program. What the hell am I supposed to do if I can't tell what's real and what's not? It's always so pathetic when a human first realizes that his own brain might deceive him, the software replied. It looks like you'll have to add yourself to the list of people you can't trust in this business. Means. Through the CRT Glass by Bradley Milton, page 77. The wireframe snake uncoiled itself in front of Hendrix. Now that you're nearly jacked into our cypherverse, there's no escape for you. It was at this point that Hendrix knew the only way to save his own life would be to hack into the system and shut it down for good. Afternoon, Gil. What are you up to? Me? Oh, just questioning reality, man. Just questioning reality. Finally graduate to some real literature instead of the usual dreck? Huh? Never mind. Look, I need the 80 bucks you borrowed last week. Ugh, this is not a good time for this. Hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna say that. Jesus Christ. Okay, we'll, we'll go with the first one since that's the least incredibly rude one. Oh, really? Just that real quick. This is the one. There we go. Okay, that should be a little better. The game is uh, frozen. Usually it's like 20 or so seconds to unfreeze.
I have to force quit this if it doesn't uh, unfreeze in a couple seconds. That's true, it is about time to pivot. Not sure. Oh. Just minimized. There we go, okay. So now we can be diplomatic. We can pretend that we need it for something urgent, or we can threaten him with violence. I'm gonna go with diplomatic. Come on, Gil, you're one of my best buddies. I lent you that money in 100% good faith. Can't you do me this favor in return? Oh, alright. All I've got right now is 65, though. It'll have to do. Thanks, pal. <clears throat> I'm not sure how much longer this mod is. I feel like we might be almost done. So how much do we have? I think we have exactly 120 after... Oh, 130! Okay. How'd it go with Gil? I got 65 bucks. A favorable outcome. Where to now? So now we're gonna go back to the mall and get that beer. To the mini mall. Splendid. Back for the beer? One adult beer, please. I'll take the six cases for 120. Here you go. Have a nice day. Thanks. I also need a bunch of food for a party. What's easiest? What kind of party? Young people. Drunk. Giant food bucket. Contains assorted tasties. 20 bucks. Feeds an army. Don't have the cash for that. Maybe next time. Good. Ten short. Darn it. Hmm. Oh. It's calling. Rich. Hey, buddy. Fired up about tonight? Yeah, I can almost taste the... whatever beer it is I just bought. Well, I hope you can control yourself, because we're not done shopping. Why? One of our little dolls from tonight just called. She and her friends want wines. Oh, for God's sake. I know. It's ridiculous. But I told them it's no problem. I'm at the realty office now. Just grab three bottles of cheap nonsense and don't worry about a thing. I'm supposed to be at work right now. I know. Isn't it great? I'm practically out of cash. What do you want me to do? Sell my blood? We don't have that kind of time. I'll pay you back on Monday. Fine. They expressed an interest in some marijuana as well. Mm, Fine. Just right? be silent. One more thing. I just talked to Sally. She said that Brooke is supposed to get home in a little while. So? What should I do if I go home? Avoid her? I'm not saying you can't handle your own on-again, off-again, estranged kind of pseudo-girlfriend. I'm just saying that if you're still short on cash... I am not borrowing money from that girl. The resultant head games would score off the charts. Whatever, man. Just do the best you can and I'll see you soon. Alright, well that's like probably a good point to pull it on this one for the week.